The U. Pre-College Development Academy. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robbie Carroll, this is PCDA TV episode 10. Today we'll be talking a little bit about sports science and the wearable tech we will be using as an academy. But first, before we jump into that, I'm going to introduce PCDA founder, CEO, the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Hodgson. Oji, how are you doing mate? Yeah, you're looking dapper as always, mate. I can't believe this is episode 10. I know. Where does the time go, eh? When was the launch party? Uh, third week uh, in January. January 22nd. January 22nd was our birthday. Where's the time gone? Some exciting updates. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's busy time right now, isn't it, for us uh, uh, at PCDA? Uh, recruitment is in full swing. Uh, huge news with our uh, some partners that we've um, we've signed up with um, over the last what ten days. Um, we'll be getting into that more detail about those um, later on in the show. But what's been going on? What's happening in uh, the recruitment side of things, Mister Hodgson? Uh, well, where do you start? I mean, before we even launched PCDA, pre college DA, we had to have all of the pieces together, right? Where tech, well, just planning out the next level of these kids' journeys is the number one priority, right? So when we look at what is needed to get these kids to the next level, whether it's sports science, whether it's pathways, whether it's facilities, whether it's sports performance, sports medicine, accommodation, facilities, opposition, games, it's all coming together, right? And so I think tonight we're going to release, um, not to jump on your uh, show, but we're going to exciting announcement. Yep, yep. Wearable. We'll be uh, releasing our wearable tech partner, um, which is uh, yeah, which is huge for for next level planning, and we'll talk about that crystal ball that we've developed for these athletes, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do, uh, Ryan, is just is just touch on, you know, the, these athletes that we have signed have been uh, several of the, the players have, have said, you know, we, where were you two years ago? Uh, they chose PCDA because they believe we can help them make a make them a better player. Um, and they weren't getting noticed so much by the colleges that they would like to go to. So they're coming to pre-college development academy to get noticed by those coaches and those those uh, college programs. Can you talk to us a little bit about what what we'd like to call exit strategies and what options we do have for um, you know pre-college development academy uh, players? Yeah, I mean, you know, today talking to recruits about you know my first question is, what does your future look like, right? And and 10 out of 10 kids will say, I want to be a pro. Well, we have to temper those dreams. I, you know, I hate to be the, the bad guy on the other end of that phone call, but I think the parents appreciate the honesty because we bring them back to reality a little bit and say, well, okay, keep that dream alive, right? Which is on our exit strategy. Keep your dream alive, but can we bring you back down to earth a little bit and, and, and give you a plan B in case the future doesn't work out, right? Little Ollie Gunner in the background there, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, just yeah. half time, so he's just shouting in the room next to me. Got to yeah. soundproof my studio. <laughs> I know. So, you know, you look at what the next level looks like, the crystal ball, the exit strategy is what we call. And so starting next week and the week after, before the kids even step foot onto our academy, they're looking inside a crystal ball. And what that crystal ball looks like is they've got some homework to do before they come into the academy. And that is come up with, three lists of your next level programs. If you want to play for Man United, 
throw Manchester United on there because we've got the benchmarks of their 18, 19, 20-year-old pros. We know their metrics and we will show you where your metrics are and we'll show you how far behind you are, whether it's with MLS Academy plays the benchmarks, whether it's with a kid today, I want to play for Real Madrid. Okay, that's fine. Keep that on your dreamers list, right? But then we have what we call a realistic list, which is another 10 programs. And these are fluid. These are continuously evolving over the course of the year with the academy, right? And then you've got a backup list of, of, of 10 programs. So in case your dream list doesn't happen, in case, God forbid, an injury happens and you can't play on your realistic program, because what I do, mapping out the strategy, is not only do I talk to the recruits, but I talk to their coaches and people that are involved in their lives to say, okay, Coach Robbie, you coach Johnny, where do you realistically think he can play? And we'll, and that that that's designed to sting a little bit, right? It's designed to say, you know what? Wow, that's a wake-up call for me as an athlete, but that's supposed to motivate these kids to try and aspire to get to a higher level, right? And right. then you got the back, then you got the backup list where again, God forbid they have an injury and you know, maybe they're a goalkeeper and the list of schools are not looking at goalkeepers or whatever, a variety of reasons why they don't make the the, the top 20 list, right? <clears throat> and then what we do, we, 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 we compile all of this data, but then all of the kids that recruit the athletes will be given more homework to reach out to every single coach on their list and say, Coach Robbie, you, play, you, you coach at XYZ University. And I'm a goalkeeper. Would you mind sharing with me the current metrics of your starting goalkeeper? Such as, what is your starting goalkeeper's age? Is that traditionally what you look for, coach, in a starting goalkeeper? 21-year-old goalkeeper? What's his height, his weight, his vertical, right? Uh, midfielders, what's, what's the average distance covered? What's your passing percentage? What's your max speed, your Axel over 40? Yards? All of those metrics that will go into a chart and we graph it so we have an entry point of where they come into the academy and then we have where they want to get to because we've got all of this tangible data so that's kind of the crystal ball that they're looking at and then those monthly reports the digital three ring binders that we've called it they are sent to their next level coaches without fail so there's no hiding the commitment that our athletes give to us is the commitment we will give to their next level coaches, right? So if a coach is expecting your digital profile on the first of every month and it doesn't arrive because you haven't been in the gym because your your box jump hasn't increased, well, why hasn't it increased? Well, we look on your app and we say, well, Robbie, you haven't been doing your squats. You haven't been doing your leg presses. No wonder your box jump hasn't increased. So therefore, you're not you're not look you're not gonna get to the level where you want to be at. And these next level coaches are gonna see that. Yeah. So it's a transparent program really on both ends. Fantastic. <clears throat> it's fantastic. And obviously, you know, the player profiles that we've put together uh on the back end of our website. So college coaches who are watching, make sure you register on our website um so you can get access to all of our academy players. Um and you know that's 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 what pre-release information really you you get before the academy's even started which starts in august but before it's even started these coaches can be keeping an eye and making a short list of um our academy players correct 100 percent. i mean hundreds of coaches right now have already logged in on all of our platforms right so they're communicating with me daily ryan tell me about your recruits well we've had over 100 applications into the academy which is phenomenal. So we're currently filtering through those applications. We've got about 15 fully commits across both academies so far, which is, again, phenomenal. We've got, uh, am I jumping the gun here? We've got Colorado Rapids Academy, kid coming in, I'm working on another uh, MLS Next Academy player that, listen, these kids are playing at the pinnacle of youth soccer and they're not being recruited. Not through any fault of their own or the coaches, college coaches, it's nobody's fault. It's just the environment we live in now where nobody's being recruited. I don't say nobody's being recruited, but 
there are very few roster spots before the pandemic, right? We were talking about this earlier. There were very few, very few roster spots before. Now the NCAA has come out and said there's an extra year of eligibility for the next four years. So incoming freshmen, incoming freshmen to high school this year are still going to see the effects of COVID in four years or five years. That's why the PCDA is such a valuable proposition for, for these kids to rescue their soccer careers, the student athlete career, should I say. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the recruits I've been talking to uh, recently, like it's, it, there's just no, there's no traction is there uh, on the recruitment and no, no coaches are actually doing anything because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know who's staying on you know, for that extra yeah. year, who's not going to stay on, what money frees up, you know, and I think, um, you know, my main my main objective, obviously, is to get people in the academies, and uh, that's yours as well, but um, at the end of the day, it's just, it, it just seems like a no-brainer, the amount of people who are high up in the soccer world in, in the US, and even in, in, in the UK, when we've been talking to potential partners, like, they see the model and the value um that that we have at pre-college development academy all right just talk about that number one benefit right you come into our academy you can earn your associate's degree play two full year academy seasons and not burn any eligibility so you could transfer as an academic junior but an athletic freshman let that sink in an academic junior but an athletic freshman and for any athletes that might be watching this or will see this later later on what does that mean? You've played two full-year academy seasons with the pre-college DA, 64 hours a month of pure football, right? 16 hours a week on the pitch, Monday through Friday, two hours. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, double sessions, right? There's 16 hours without a game, 10 hours in the gym. That's 64 hours a month of pure football with a curriculum. That's 640 hours of pure football in 10 months. Well, a, a current college player is getting that much training and development over four years, never mind just one year, right? So when we look at letting it sink in with an academic junior and an, an athletic freshman, that means I've got half of my bachelor's degree completed, but I still have four years of eligibility. So then a college coach might, again, no promises, might say, Robbie, let me let me pay for the rest of your undergrad, right? which is two years, but hold on, you've still got two years of eligibility left, so could I possibly pay for your graduate degree too? Parents now listen, listen wisely, right? I mean, the, the future has turned, it's changed, it's evolved. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, obviously on the coach's side, you, we've, we've talked about it before, but it's, a, it's another important message, you know, that gra graduate students, it, you know, getting four graduate students releases how many scholarships, uh, you know, just because of the way how cheap uh, grad studies are versus undergrad and, you know. Yeah, yeah. One one, one uh, decent-sized Division One program told me, Ryan, I can get four graduate students on a full graduate scholarship for the price of one undergrad. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean if he's got four scholarships, he could have, 16 graduate students on a full ride for the for, for the four scholarships that it, am I, I think I'm reading that correctly because I think I can do the math yeah so therefore we've just stretched their scholarship dollars even further and they're getting a more mature player and a more physically mature player and you know if, especially if they've come through pre-college development academy a more ta tactically and technically mature player as well oh well 100% right the way the the curriculum is designed. The design, you know, I get this question asked a lot as well, and it's important to understand, you know, A, how good are the players coming into your academy? Okay, it's a fair enough question. Who are you playing? Both of those questions are somewhat irrelevant. And I tell the families this because we're not building a roster to win games. Right. We're building a roster to get you personally, individually to your next level. Yes, training environment, comp competition and training is important, right? Having the right uh, pegs in the right hole and the right people on the right seats on the right bus, 
that's important to win games. But our ultimate goal is to develop you to your next level, whatever that level is, what I spoke about earlier. Right, right. Well, I'm going to pull up a graphic here, and I want to, I want to ask your, uh, your opinion on it. Is it, um, is it, Liverpool, is it Liverpool standing in the Premier League? No, it's not. But we, we, we shouldn't talk about that this week. We should have a little yeah, bit of respect for the little bit of compassion. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> so I'm going to pull Talking this one up. Let's do Mourinho. No, let's not go there. All right. Yeah. No, we won't go there. Try yeah. to call Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on class. Give it a rest, Jose. Your team sucks. You're not very good. Everybody else has figured you out. Stop blaming other people, mate. Sorry. Yeah, continue, Ryan. Right. What do you think to these stats? These are yeah. directly from the NCAA. Yeah, I mean, uh, odds of playing college soccer from last year, right? Pre pandemic, uh, 1920. Number of high school players, just shy of half a million. Number of college soccer players, right? Which is just less than 10% of that number. Uh, percentage of high school players competing at any college level, any college level, which is one, two, three, NAI, JUCO. And the male level is 7.4%. But that other number, that right below, Right where it's you know not even one percent of uh, athletes playing at Division One, and this these numbers are also taken into consideration with foreign players that are already taken on their rosters, which we know that statistic is about twenty six percent of college rosters are, are taken up by international players, right? And then obviously. Uh, the odds of a high school player making any college roster is 14 to 1. It's, you know, it's staggering. And so not only you, should you be looking at that, again, that's our exit strategy. That's the ideal realistic backup is, you know, do you want to play? And I was talking to one of my friends the other day, uh, finishing one of his games. He's a neutral friend who shall remain nameless. Um, had a couple of unhappy red shirts on his roster at the end of the game, right? Um, and I asked him this question to ask his players, and I've asked this question with my players all the time, if I can get it right, if I don't butcher it. Would you rather play every minute of every game and lose every game, or would you rather not play any minutes but be part of a successful program and win every game? What side of the fence do you do you fall on? Are you a team player or are you a selfish player that, would just rather just play every minute of every game and yeah everybody wants to play but you've got to make some concessions eventually right and that's why you look at these odds robbie we are in a country the size of a continent right you you have big companies like pepsi or coke or gatorade that might struggle penetrating certain markets in the country other companies right that struggle to break into certain geographical areas, demographics. We're asking high school kids to figure out a country the size of a continent with where they want to play at 17 years old, yeah. which, you know, they're moving out of their house the first time they're moving out of their house to a foreign place. And a foreign place is LA to New York, right? Could be North Carolina to South Carolina. It's a foreign place. It's, it's new to them. So when you look at these odds, they're just staggering, mate. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, again, like you said, the, the country is the size of a continent and you go to different areas of the country, there's different different cultures, uh, you know, there's different customs. There's there's all sorts. Like, I mean, I've, I've kind of done it. You've been all over the place. I've lived all over the place. You know, Texas, from Texas to D.C., that is, <laughs> you know, well, a black and white difference, isn't it? And well, then, you, yeah. You 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 talk. Uh, I'll give him. A, I'll name drop him. Here. Dave Simeone. I was talking to him last week, right? He's living in Texas now. I think he's living. Yeah, he's living in Texas. You can you can go from one side of Portugal to the next in what three hours? Yeah. You can go from one side of the UK to the next in two hours. Depending right? on traffic nowadays, but depending yeah. on traffic, train, jump on a train, right? Transport, right? But in Texas. You can't get from one side of Texas to the next in what thirteen hours. So, I mean, you're talking different culture. You're talking a player that I sent to El Paso, Texas, to play for Rio Grande, tore their ACL, 
they can't live there because it's a different culture to where they're from. So they ended up transferring, the soccer career was over. They ended up transferring to uh, LMU, Loyola Marymount. Right. Right. So, yeah, you've just got to, it's, there's so many different elements to, to recruit, not just soccer, just in general, just students in general. So let's talk about our new partnership. Um, I'm going to play the recorded uh, interview I did with the with the two chaps, but uh, um, let's talk about Mark Wilson. What do you know about Mark? Well, I'm not going to give so, away the I'm not going to give away the the company that we're partnered with until the video plays. So Mark Wilson, what do you know about Mark Wilson, mate? Well, so you reminded me today. Um, you know, I met Willow at the convention a couple of years ago. Um, and really, it, I didn't put two and two together. I didn't put two and two together, and he's just the epitome of just a a down to earth guy, that former player that is just so easy to have a conversation with. And what he's part of and what he's co founded um, is amazing. And, and trust me, when I did my due diligence with looking at different companies with who we wanted to partner with, from apparel to wearable tech to you name it. This just stood out immediately. Number one, because they are an insurgent brand too, right? And I think having like-minded people with the same vision and mission is really important to, to collaborate with. So um, am I, can I name drop? Can I, shall I tell you? Or I mean, right, so Mark Wilson, I didn't put two and two together until you told me today, but uh, obviously the co-founder of the company that we're gonna announce. Yeah, and then there's uh, Tom Shields as well. Um, what what do we know about Tom? What do you know about Tom Ryan? So uh, I've only known Tommy again for a couple of years, but I've had you know multiple conversations and with Tommy. Obviously, he works in the youth system. Um, he works with with STA Soccer, a, a a giant of a club up in the Jersey area. DOC. Um, he, he he's such a good educator, but what Tommy has done and I enjoy talking to Tommy about this, is how he pieces together coach education, which is one of my passions, US Coaches Club, right? This side, right. US Coaches Club, which again is a, is a major passion driving. I'll do that next year, right? It's the opposite, <laughs> right? One of the major driving passions behind what I do, but, but having a conversation with Tommy about how he now is, and again, I know a small snippet of this, we'll have Tommy on later, but how he can bring coach education and sports science and wearable tech to the same conversation. And if I remember this correctly, Tommy calls it active participation amongst players, right? right. What, what that means is from a director of coaching, if there are any DOCs out there, listen to this. When you are trying to educate your coaches from afar, and Tommy, Willow, I apologize if I butcher this, but I don't think I will. Active participation, meaning that you've got a list of all of your teams, age groups, in your platform, on your online platform, right? What you can do now from afar is you can now manage or, or reflect on what the active participation is of your athletes during a, a particular training session or game. So if a parent wants to complain that their playing time is not very good, well, your active participation in the game is only 15%. You stand around a lot. In training sessions, you stand around a lot, Robbie. On the coach education. Keeper. Right, exactly, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, but then you look at the, from a coach education perspective, imagine we'll bring this back to, to pre-college DA because this is where I'm going to get really interested in. We've got two academies right now in Arizona and Georgia. The same curriculum, arguably the same sessions, right? Let's just make it the same uh, environment, weather, wind, whatever, right? It's all the exact same, even though two different climates, but for argument's sake, it's the same. Then I can say, okay, coach and coach in both locations, Andy and Pete, Pete, your active participation in building the ball in the back, your athletes were working at 45% today. But Coach Andy in Arizona, he was at 80%. What? What, what was going on? Do your players not understand the session? That helps us with a curriculum standpoint to actually uh, 
put a performance improvement plan in place for the players to make sure that they are understanding the concepts that we're teaching. Otherwise, they're just standing around. So that active participation is just a snippet of it, but it's absolutely brilliant. You've muted yourself, Robbie, and you're the host. I know, Nightmare, I had a screaming child just outside the door uh, okay. while you were trying to talk. Um, I know during the interview today, I was like, you know, every every two minutes, it was like, wow, that's that's epic. I, I actually want to put one of these on. Um, yeah. And I, I actually want to see if we can put together a curriculum for goalkeepers where we can use wearable tech and get, get some good metrics for goalkeepers. Um, I know we touched on, uh, touched on that with uh, with Willow, but... Uh, Ryan, I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put the show on, um, and then afterwards um, I'm gonna ask you a few questions about what you thought about what the guys said, and see if we can build on top of that. Okay. Brilliant. Yep. All righty. Mark Wilson, Tom Shields, welcome to PCDA TV. We are thrilled to have you. We're thrilled to have you on the show. We're thrilled to have you as partners. How are we doing today, gents? Great. Thanks for having us on, Robbie. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, mate. Delighted to be here. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself, mate, and then we'll we'll move on to Tom uh, afterwards. I just like to uh, give our viewers a, a little background of our of our guests, and then uh, you know. Then I start grilling you with all these uh, technical questions. So, Mark, fire away, mate. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of a background in the game. Um, had a career from being 17 years old up to 33 years old and then retired when my legs wouldn't carry me anymore. Um, decided to, to move over to the USA as a director of coaching in Manhattan, um, which was a, a steep learning curve of navigating the minefield that is, that is youth soccer in the US. Um, and managing a program in, in, in a city like New York um, was, was a challenge. So I learned a lot, um, stayed there three years and then found or was brought in to uh, take a look at an idea by the two other co-founders of Beyond Pulse, Michael Sop and, and Mark Andre. And they brought me in, um, you know, after a couple of discussions and then we, we kind of spent maybe three or four weekends in New York City. They would drive from Ohio, so a nice nine hour drive. Um, and we would lock ourselves away in, in my apartment in New York and brainstorm the idea. Um, so as, as one of the co-founders of Beyond Paul site, I was then put in charge of, uh, of sales, um, you know, going after some money as you need to do, uh, find some investment. Um, and then, yeah, to date we're, we're five years, six years old now. Um, on around 10,000 players and we've uh, we obviously brought people like Tom Shields in, rock stars like Tom to come in and build the educational piece for us um, and, and work integrally on the product to, to help refine and develop it. Cool. So, I mean, that, that leads right into Tom. I mean, he's a, apparently he's a living legend. So, Tom, tell <laughs> us all about yourself, mate. I think, mate, I think that's uh, some bold statements and there's been a few people uh, maybe sell sell a few porky pies there but i uh, i appreciate the intro nonetheless um yeah so far less glamorous playing history than, than willow and he was uh ever humble about his background um but yeah came to america 12 years ago um did undergrad and postgrad stuff back at home and, and coached a number of, of pro clubs um moved on now so myself and mark are both in new jersey so i'm i'm now a technical director of a of a club on the east coast um also been division one uh college coach on both the boys and, and girls side national staff coach on the boys side with id2 and, and willow's been part of that um you know that process and that journey as well um yeah very much you know very much as willow said involved day to day on on the education front um just a bit of a coaching geek really in all honesty robbie just uh you know we get to we get to dive into a lot of the fun stuff around you know how the 
best practice environments and how players, you know, how, how we can push players. And obviously, you know, that that's going back three years now when I was introduced to Hodgie, that's kind of where obviously this this all all started and, and looking at ways to basically be able to to accelerate the experience that, that players have and open doors that might otherwise be closed for them. And um, yeah, obviously delighted to be part of, of Beyond Pulse and have been for the last four and a half years now. Um, and as we said, looking forward to uh, diving into this and, and being grilled a little bit. It's nice for us to be on the other side of an interview. So uh, yeah, fire away, mate. All right. So uh, first question is basically, uh, how is Beyond Pulse going to benefit our athletes at pre-college development academy during our 10 month season um so we've got this big focus at the minute on looking at data from a different lens so if you look at data and just see a number it, it's just a number you'll spend a lot of time trying to figure out what that really represents and means so when you think about any number you might see in terms of distance covered in one of our metrics, active participation, heart rate, workload, there's an action linked to a behavior that sits behind that number. So if you think about persistence, if you think about resilience, if you think about adaptability, that manifests itself in, in our metrics. So when you have a set of core values or core principles, um, as a club, as a culture, uh, as a player, it's very easy to start looking at our data um as a behavior and that's when it really starts to underpin the things that you do so if you're looking at distance covered how many meters do i cover per game in my particular position linked to my game model it starts to become a benchmark especially when you're you're playing well and tom and i say this all the time success and, and failure leave clues can you start to analyze and look to match up your practice data to your game data and find a consistency so it's going to bring a um an objective overview linked to linked to your behaviors um to all of the players and the coaches that get to use beyond pulse yeah and i, and I think robbie just to add to what willow said you know beyond pulse yes it's we're a, you know we are a wearable tech product um you know we are a performance uh, i guess support and monitoring system but but more importantly in many ways we're a coach education tool as well so as Willow just started to touch upon there, um, to support the players, the coaches are going to need to be accountable. Um, you know, obviously things like a, an annual tactical periodization plan, understanding how weeks are punctuated with games and, and what the necessary design structure intensity of practice sessions might look like as a, as a result of when that game schedule is, you know, what, what, Beyond Pulse will provide is is objective insight as to whether or not the coaches fundamentally are, are creating and designing training environments that um, allow for the players to be most able to produce their optimal level of performance on a weekend, right? To to consistently train and perform with a level of intensity in practice that facilitates their ability to get better faster than those in the environments that frankly are, are not pcda um you know so from our perspective it's it's really looking at being that that coaching aid um that allows the coaches to to truly demonstrate that they're committed to to helping the players become better faster than everybody else love it love it i'm not gonna lie i just can't wait for the academy to get started obviously but also sure. like one of my things i want to see the metrics that that the different players have when they first walk through the door versus when they finish that program and being able to track that it basically will help us those metrics will help us uh put together the exit strategy for each individual player um from what ryan uh marin and greg uh marin is our uh, physio or our athletic trainer uh, also the missus uh and then greg uh he was the uh sports performance director for pcda but he was uh you know head strength conditioning coach at uh san jose earthquakes and uh you know all, all these guys have got a lot more knowledge about sports science than uh, than this guy but uh you know i from what they were saying it, it just it, i'm just really excited to get it and i mean the next uh question i think i've got is what's the advantage of beyond pulse over other traditional gps units I think I think the, the main difference is where 
look, we, we're certainly built for the mass market as well, right? So we're, we're affordable and we're scalable because of the platform that sits behind our product. Um, we're very um, non-intrusive as a product. So there's not a lot of heavy lifting. There's no carry case to walk to the field with. There's no charging, plugging in pods, you know, expecting somebody or, or having somebody have to be accountable um, to make sure that they're charged up and brought to practice every day. We want coaches to focus on doing what they're supposed to do, and that's plan, design, you know, sessions that get the most out of their players, that put the player at the centre of their learning journey. Um, we want them to be able to, you know, self-reflect on their delivery and spend time in that process. So we, we don't want to turn them into sports scientists, nor do we want to turn players into sports scientists. Um, you have the added benefit of, of having somebody in there who will be able to, to analyse and look at this data uh, in a more granular way. Um, but it, from our perspective and the feedback we get from from over 10, 11,000 users, from coaching staff, from DOCs, we're, we're a simple to use product that's actually actionable daily. Even if you're just looking at one or two metrics, there's always something you can tweak in your practice session as a coach and something you can learn from as a player within your sessions. I mean, I, I can add, but I think he nailed it. So, uh... <laughs> as, as Ryan does when he's talking about PCDA, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out. I don't actually have my mic because we've just moved and it's in a box somewhere, but mic drop there, mate. Well done, uh, Willow. <laughs> just that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was class. So, I guess I'll move on and she, uh, Tom, I'll let you uh, answer this, mate. Uh, like, how can our remote sports performance staff utilize Beyond Pulse to optimize uh, load and conditioning for each of our PCDA athletes? So hang about. I get the difficult question. Willow gets a nice, easy <laughs> question. Come on, Robbie, lad. Sorry, <laughs> man. Um, no, look, so one thing that Mark didn't answer was the fact that um, uniquely, I guess, Beyond Pulse has a, a player app. So, in, uh, you know, everything is done through a smartphone. Um, everything is done through using Bluetooth technology. So as Willow said, there's no carry cases. There's, there's no units that need charging, which means that we can be accessed remotely. So when, whether in season and people are, hey, we've got to go back home, whether it's the off season and people are remote, um, Beyond Pulse's player app means that the, the athletes can take their, their unit, their smart belt with them wherever they are in the world um, and record a session. So if if staff are working at, at distance, um, they can still access a dashboard that will be full of then individual as opposed to team-based sessions where they can observe, record, analyze, provide feedback on that individual's uh, training or, or game performance uh, data. So frankly, you know, during COVID, we had to we had to pivot when when teams weren't allowed to be together and coaches weren't allowed to have direct access to their kids and you know as an innovative forward thinking you know company um we pivoted and invested a lot of obviously time money and resources in the development of the player app so you know now hopefully uh, it gives you know people like the guys that you've referenced that, that might have to operate you know remotely at times the opportunity to still you know provide that meaningful support to to all the players and and, and frankly robbie the players are still held accountable for hey it's not just here's your workout i trust you to go and do it you know now it's okay well let make it uploaded by three o'clock in the afternoon we'll have a zoom call at five o'clock and we can we can dive in and look at it so again as, as i touched upon the coaching accountability piece you know in the in the answer to the first question this is now also you know really driving that notion of players being accountable for for owning their development and obviously the staff being on hand to be able to support them uh, as a result of, of the technology being accessible at, at, at distance. So um, I think think maybe I got it with a little bit of a waffle. I don't know, Willow, if you want to, uh, if you want to jump in on anything, mate, but... Um, yeah, got it, mate. I think you got it. I don't think that was quite a mic drop, but I think a penny drop, maybe. I'll take maybe. a penny drop. Hey, mate, it's, it's about my worth, Robbie, so it's all good, mate. I'm, I'm <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, so... Obviously, I, we had a chat before, and one of my passions is goalkeeping. I mean, you can tell by this and, the, you know, everything else. And you haven't seen me walk, but, uh, you know, the body's completely wrecked now. And uh, as one. well as that, the missus, she was a goalkeeper. So uh, little Ollie Gunner has a lot to live up to. Hopefully, he's going to be a nutcase as well. So um, 
what what kind of metrics have you seen from your different uh, clients and stuff like that? Uh, have the goalkeeper coaches at different clubs um, been measuring on goalkeepers? I think one of the things that you know we're not we're not goalkeeper specific because a lot of our metrics are built around distance covered, high impact sprints, things like that. But the heart rate metric in particular for goalkeepers shows an ability to push yourself and recover. So if you think about a heart rate spike into your top two zones, 80% plus, 90 plus, and then the ability to recover. If you think about the work of a goalkeeper, you're always up and down and lots of bounding, plyometric jumping, um, really intense sessions that you guys go through. Um, you know, the heart rate's a great indicator of your ability to be ready to go again very, very quickly. Um, so that, that's been one that I know goalkeeper coaches at certain clubs have, have had a close eye on. Um, and of course, now goalkeepers are becoming more and more an integral part of possession games. So it is also that element of active participation within even a possession activity with players. So AP measures the amount of time you're moving in a low, moderate or vigorous zone within any activity. So for a goalkeeper, if you do end up being brought into a possession activity, do you put yourself on the periphery? You know, like sometimes centre backs do. They don't want to be in the middle on that 360 view. Or do you go in and you start to to participate and put yourself in the mix and really test yourself as a goalkeeper, just to refine and develop that that first touch under pressure. So those two, I would say, are the, the key metrics that goalkeepers can utilise. Yeah, the only thing that I would add to that is obviously, you know, I I use Beyond Pulse in a in a youth club environment day to day. Um, and sometimes it's funny to see the goalkeepers achieving AP scores similar to outfield players. But if you think about the modern game, their ability to reposition themselves, support based upon where the ball is, you know, step up, keep things compact, drop off quickly. Like, it, you know, people might look and say, oh, well, hang about, like, what's going on? But actually, I think many modern coaches would would critique goalkeepers if they weren't active and they were just stuck on their line. And, you know, so it's it's quite... Again, I think that the beauty is that you can you can dive as deep as you want, um, position specifically with the with the data, um, and yeah, you know that that side of it is is always fascinating. You know, the more that, that goalkeepers become a fundamental part of of a team and, and a game model, right? Like it's uh, it's no good being a high press team if the goalkeeper is going to stay on the line and leave that space for for counter attacks, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Willow, just to answer your question, possession drills. Definitely 100%. I stand in the corner so I can see this. That's that's all I used to do. Basically, I played wall ball. You give me the ball, you get it back. And yeah. I'll tell you what, 100% possession all the time, and I went home happy. So, <laughs> Fast completion rate. There you that's, it. that's it. I was like Jordan Henderson, just forwards and uh, – sorry, back, back to the side. side. <laughs> yeah, that's it. England captain. Oh, well, should be. but um, So – Beyond Pulse, obviously, you said, what, five or six years old now? That from from the inception of the idea, in market, we've been about three, I think this is our third year. Yeah. Fourth, so, year. Nice fourth, year, fourth year. After we developed the product, yeah, we went to market in 2017. Okay. And then um, this is our fourth year. So, I mean, obviously, you, 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 you're changing the market um, mm. compared to some of the other, like, wearable tech brands that are out there. Um, yeah. And... and like you said, I mean, it's not it's not invasive. I've seen, uh, you know, from working uh, DA clubs and stuff like that, you know, mm. te- uh, sports scientists walking around with these big cases and charging cases and all that kind of stuff. You know, would you say that you guys are changing the face of wearable tech? Um, just judging by your popularity, I mean, you said, what, 10,000 players now? Yeah, we just passed the 10,000 player mark, you know, a couple of weeks back. So we're growing quickly, yeah. Yeah, well, congratulations on that that uh, milestone there. So what, what do you think is the main reason for Beyond Pulse hitting that milestone? Because, you know, like I said, the sports scientists, the big carry cases and all these metrics, and you actually... Like some of the big big brands that we all know about, because uh, they spend millions on their marketing and stuff like that. You know, they don't tell you the truth. Where you actually need to employ a full time sports scientist to break down that data, right? Yeah. But obviously, 
there's the little app and we, we saw that in the video what else it does beyond pulse bring to the table well it's simplicity and scalability so we have a platform that sits in the background where a director of coaching at any given time whether there's a session on site or five going on 10 miles away as soon as those sessions are synced with the app and it's only two taps of a button one to connect one to sync it pops up on the, the coach platform or the doc technical director platform so you can have an immediate insight into practice as somebody who oversees your entire program without having to be at every location which is impossible anyway so from a from a leadership position you're able to get an overview of, of all of your teams and your players and your staff um, uh, to, to measure things like are we, are we adhering to the curriculum, the periodized plan, you know, what types of sessions are being delivered, are they highly engaging, do we have high active participation in our youngest age groups, um, is, our, is our methodology and our philosophy being adhered to, so it's, you're able to oversee an entire club um, through the actual coach platform in a very simple and easy to navigate way. Like Tom said, you can go in granular if you want, if you want to dive deeper into it. And you also get email reports as well immediately after practice. So if you're a coach, you don't even need to log in and go directly into your platform and start navigating the data. We break it down into really clear, crisp graphs that, are, that can give you actionables for the next day and tell you if, you if you hit your objectives for that particular session as well. So you don't even need to log in and go into the platform and take time to do that, especially if you're coaching back to back to back practices, which you you can do here in the US. You, you can immediately have your, your email pop up and on the, on the warm down or the little debrief at the end, you can address any anything you might want to as, as you personally. Did I hit my targets as a coach? Did I deliver an engaging session at, at the player at the center of the learning journey? And you know, some of my players might be outliers and, and maybe one or two started to drift in the practice, but I didn't catch it in the moment. I can catch it immediately after and start to build that relationship with the player as well. So. The simplicity of what Beyond Pulse is and what it allows clubs en masse to do is really a, a great sticky point for us as a product. Yeah, and then um, kind of the the next side of it, I guess, that the stuff that's not just the on the field and day to day is is what me and Mark spend most of our time with, right? Which is the the education of broader coaches, right? Our our broader Beyond Pulse coaching community. Um, it, you know, we we don't believe in being transactional. We don't believe in, you know, you're just a, you're a customer, you're a user, and, and that's the last time you'll hear from us or the last, that's the last bit of insight, education, guidance, support that you'll receive. Um, you know, when we say that we are advocates of coaching education and, and, are, and a coaching education company at our heart, like, we live that. We live that in our daily and, and weekly habits. And, um, you know, in a couple of hours, we have, uh, the final one of our um, coach mentorship programs. It's a, a new, a new idea that we've launched this winter. You know, me and myself and Willow, we've probably got close to 100 hours of, of free educational content and webinars um, that we obviously shared with our users throughout the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. Um, you know, we want to be on hand to to support to to offer insight, guidance, advice, wherever we can. Um, and, and also just to be, you know, just to be a, a sounding block, right? We, we know that the world that we're in and our industry specifically is built upon relationships and, and sharing ideas of best practice. And, you know, the hope is, <clears throat> excuse me, the hope is that, you know, the people that we're fortunate enough to call partners and, and friends um, and that demonstrate the same mentality to learning and development as we do, welcome each other because ultimately then, you know, the ideas that PCDA are sharing, well, how can that help youth clubs? You know, is it different exit strategies and exit routes? Great. Well, then also, how can, you know, the challenge of one director of coaching in Portland help one director of coaching in Texas and another one in New Jersey, right? And we, we can bring together this community of, of people that are obviously, you know, driven by changing the landscape, Robbie, as you said, changing the culture, you know, changing what, what is expected of youth clubs, youth coaches and, and you know, club directors. Um, and it's and it's nice to be able to to support the growth of that broader community for, for ultimately the betterment of every of every youth player, high school player, college player that's that's in the US and, and around the world as we as we branch out internationally now with 
beyond post Germany and Chile and England. Um, you know, we're we're starting to have more of a global presence, and you know, the, the hope is that the work that myself and Mark do, in addition to just the benefits of the of the, the product itself, that back end support can be, you know, can be significant in in continuing to to raise the game and change the game. Right? That's why our our hashtag is better coaches, better players. You know, we we believe in supporting the coaches to make the the learning environment the best it can be for every player that's that's in our products and playing the game that we all love. So. Yeah, and I think that is why the Pre-College Development Academy and Beyond Pulse Partnership just, just makes sense on every single level. I mean, I'm, you're better coaches, better players, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then our our hashtag is, you know, level up. Level they up. are wanting yeah. to level up those players that yeah. might have just missed out because they were from this school and the coach watched that school and didn't get that offer or you know and then you've, you've got those other schools that have got what 60 men roster and it's like the kid's never going to play he's going to be he's going to be a code he's going to be a, a wall player you know he's or what we call a resi or a, a, yeah. a youth player back in the day he's going to be cleaning the boots and standing in the wall for set piece practices where at pcda you know he's going to be he's going to be getting training every day he's going to be playing in meaningful games for 10 months out of the year and then we're going to be measuring the metrics of when he walks through the door versus when he's about to leave the door. And that will help him then sell himself to his, you know, whichever exit strategy he's chosen, whether he's chosen our uh, play and study abroad option or um, our, you know, four year coach uh, or four year institution yeah. or even maybe professional. Like this kid can now say, look at my metrics, coach. Mm -hmm. Look, can I can I ask you what does your number ten do? Because here's what I can do, yeah. you know. And then let's say they play a, a four two three one. Uh, that number ten, we we break our uh, seasons or our ten months down into trimesters. So we play, you know, three months or three and a half months of, you know, four back systems, three back systems, and then a five back system. So each player can then have an intelligent conversation with the next level coach, wherever that might be, about his position and how it fits in that formation because he's been drilled on it. You know, I mean, as a former DOC Willow and a, a current DOC uh, Tom, is that something that it, it would stand out to you? Yeah, I think, I think curious players make, you know, it, it makes it more interesting for coaches because if they've got a curiosity about what else can I learn? What do I already know? What's my knowledge base? Because, you know, we, we've got a webinar that goes into working memory and, and the deeper your knowledge base, the, the, the more space you free up in working memory. And in terms of performance and action and perception, action coupling, we're going a little bit deep here. It, you know, the deeper your knowledge base, the, the more quickly you can make decisions on the soccer field so the fact that you're building this understanding of different formations and different systems and game models um into the knowledge base of these players and their specific roles and responsibilities for individuals but also the connectivity right there's patterns within that you know if you're a two how do i connect with the with the seven and the nine and the ten to get into final areas of the field or even break through mid, the, the the midfield third so the deeper that is um, and then you add the objectivity to it with, well, actually, I can link this to some data, to some metrics to showcase to you that all encompassing, I can fit into this system and perform at this level for you. That becomes extremely valuable if I'm recruiting a player. If you're coming to me with all this info, rather than just a highlight reel and a CV, rather than me just getting the opportunity to see you in one or two showcase events where you might be having a good day i want to i want to know what you've done over time i want to know if you're the right character if you're the right person for me and if and if you're that player that wants to learn that has a curiosity to keep learning but also have a knowledge base that means i can plug you right into my team and i know you're going to perform to the levels we expect then you know that that's transformational for a college coach to be able to to recruit players like that it's transformational for a semi-pro or professional coach to be able to have a player approach them in that manner and provide them with that level of detail yeah and and willow you, you know 
So we speak a lot, Robbie, about um, kind of key qualities and characteristics of developing kids. And, and you know, the, the one that I thought, well, I was going to touch upon there is adaptability mm -hmm. um, and, and the ability to be tactically flexible enough to adjust and adapt to different systems and different moments in the game where different roles and expectations might need to be performed and carried out, different duties executed. Um, you know, as I, as I said at the start, you know, I've been fortunate enough to see firsthand the Division One landscape on both sides of, of the game here. Um, and how many players are recruited as a striker and end up as a fullback, as a centre midfielder and end up as a centre back, you know, as a centre midfielder and end up as a fullback. Like, so the ability to understand different systems, have previous experience of it, and, and perhaps potentially have been exposed to multiple roles within those systems is only going to is only going to strengthen the the marketability and desirability that 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 player has when they enter you know a future recruiting conversation right like um i think i think especially in the in the modern game and it and it's and it's credit to you know the development of the game in the us i think it's it's 12 years since i came here and and the growth of the growth that I've seen in, in the kids just loving football is is massive and knowing football and knowing players and watching the game. Yeah, probably still not to the extent of other parts of the world. But, you know, now if we can really, if you can support that, that more insular level of knowledge that they're gaining through exposure on TV and live games with, you know, a 12 or 24 month program that exposes them to, you know, these different ways of thinking and playing you know the roles and responsibilities in different systems that they're, they're naturally going to have a greater opportunity to go in and you know and find more future homes right and find a home that's that's most suitable for for them so i think it's a you know i think it's a great idea um and something that you know we're certainly looking forward to seeing the benefits of perfect so chaps that's about it for today i'd love to get you guys back on the show um what i have got planned coming up soon is uh what i want to call the, the the premier league burn and uh i'm sure i'm sure you've seen it it's uh alan shearer and ian wright mm -hmm. uh, and dad jokes and stuff like that but what we do is we pick a team each from um from the premier league and we come up with five jokes each and we see who can make each other laugh and stuff like that now i am planning on doing a, a vip show with about six uh, six of my previous guests, and I think uh, you two, you know, being Northern lads, uh, will have a sense of humour. Like no, no dig at Southerners there at all. But um, you know, I'd love to get you guys back on the show uh, for a, a little bit less serious uh, and more fun uh, uh, conversation. But yeah. before you go, and before I put your uh, the, the, the promo video on again, where do individuals, clubs? DOCs, presidents go to touch base with you guys to become partners with Beyond Pulse. Tom, do you want to lead? You're a social media guru here. Yeah, I don't know about that as well. There's, uh, there's a few titles being thrown out this morning that's uh, dicey for me. Um, yeah, Robbie, so we're at Beyond Pulse on every major social platform. So Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, Myself and Willow are obviously quite prominent on those platforms as well. So, um, or you can go um, to obviously Beyond Pulse, www.beyondpulse.com, um, just to to get a sense of who we are from the website. Um, and there's there's obviously pop up options there. Info at beyondpulse.com, um, or again, Tom at beyondpulse.com, and Wilson at beyondpulse.com. You know, you can you can go just about anywhere. But I can send you. Um, I can send you the links, Robbie, if if we want to kind of have those in the, the notes section of um, of the link to the to the show and things like that. Just, but we're we're very accessible, and you know, I'd say this: if if not, bang down your door, bang down Hodgie's door, and uh, get cell phone numbers. Drop us a text. We're we're happy to to be accessible anyway, in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and you forgot one thing there, Tom. You can also find Beyond Pulse, their social media. And their website, as well as the info at beyondpulse.com on precollegeda.com. Of course you can. Now we can. <laughs> Officially today, now we can. 
Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's, fi- it's finally here. Really excited to be working with you chaps. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us. And uh, I hope you do catch the show uh, tonight when we uh, when we go live. What do you think, Ryan? Absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Right? I mean, those two guys are just legends in themselves, right? I can't wait to work with them. I'm going to throw another job title out there for Tommy. Uh, fully appointed uh, pre-college DA sports scientist beyond pulse manager if you'll go for that <laughs> well uh, with that accent i think he'll uh throw, throw it out to him we'll get him on a call about like, pure man pure yeah yeah well you know i just wanted to just i wrote down a couple of things from that i mean it was just uh you know i always look whenever i'm coaching coaches or whether i'm listening to coaches and learning i always try and take you know the, the golden nuggets that people uh that people say right like one of my mentors uh barry gorman former penn state right head coach see that an absolute legend has taught me so much uh shella simon has taught me uh Grand canyon university has taught me a lot but just listening to tommy and will right one thing that we are going to do with our athletes is give them a coaching license that is really important to understand that if I had a coaching license as a player, Robbie, I would have been a much better player than I was. Much better player. Because I would have understood the game. And that's the value of PCDA with the trimesters and the IQ and the knowledge. So, um, But yeah, we've, we've, we've uh, hit it out of the park as the old adage would go with Beyond Pulse and that partnership. So it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And just to build on top of what you just said about the, the coaching qualifications, your old gaffer and my old gaffer, the living legend himself, Chris Coates, took over uh, the Wayfield College programme when I was a member of it. And the uh, first thing he did was uh, brought a level two to the programme. We went from not winning a game to starting to win games to the uh, semi-final of the College's Cup. Uh, somebody you know kind of dropped a clangor in that. But, you know... Is what it is, but you know, it just proves that that a bunch of hard lads from Wakefield with limited skill took a uh, took their level twos, learned more about the game, and then started putting together results. I mean, that's well, it's it's. I'm actually a little bit annoyed at Chris Coates because he went the other way to what he did to us. So he gave you guys coaching licenses to become better players. He stripped the captaincy off me for the semi-final of the game because I was more concerned with being a captain than I was with being a goal scorer. And I remember that day because he gave the captaincy to A.D. Gray, who's now living in Chicago, who is working with the Chicago Fire, right? But I can't believe. But guess what? I scored two goals and we won 2-1, which was unbelievable. What a legendary sort of decision in the, in the locker room that he said, nope. You're not captain, Ryan. I'm giving it to somebody else. You need to focus on scoring. Well, that'll stick with me for the rest of my life. So thanks, Coatsy. We're going to have to get him on this show. That'll be uh, that'll be a barrel of laughs. It will, won't it? It will. So, yeah. Well, mate, I think uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. Uh, we've hit that hour mark. It's been an absolute blast uh, for you athletes, 2021 grads who still haven't found a home. Visit precollegeda.com forward slash apply now. Get your application in. We are still accepting applications. We are still going through applications, so spaces are limited. Get your app in now to secure your place. Ryan, pleasure as always, mate. Yeah, likewise, Rob. Appreciate it, pal. Cheers, lad. Well, guys, that was it for tonight. My name is Robbie Carroll. This is PCDA TV. Have a good weekend. The U, Pre College Development Academy. Are you ready?